Humphrey, Chapter 11, TV or Not TV. Wow, Friday was a great adventure because AJ took me on the school bus. It was noisy and smelly and very, very bumpy. And just about everyone on the bus wanted to get a good look at me, including the driver, Miss Victoria. It was exciting, almost too exciting, because AJ couldn't hold my cage steady and I was slipping and sliding and bouncing until I was quite dizzy. Sorry, Humphrey, I'm trying to hold still, AJ told me as someone bumped his elbow and sent me sprawling on the floor of my cage. It's all right, I squeaked weakly. The bus led us off close to AJ's house. It was a two-story old house with a big porch. As soon as I entered, I got a warm welcome from AJ's mom, his younger brother, Ty, his little sister, Dealey, and his baby brother, Bo. Anthony James, introduce us to your little friend, his mom said, greeting us. Anthony James? Everybody at school called AJ by his initials, or just age. This is Humphrey, he answered. Hello, Humphrey, said Mrs. Thomas. So how was your day, Anthony? Lousy. Garth kept shooting rubber bands at me. He won't leave me alone. But you two used to be best friends, his mother said. Used to be, said AJ, until he turned into a jerk. Mom patted her son on the shoulder. Well, you've got the whole weekend to get over it. Now take Humphrey into the den and get him settled. Mrs. Brisbane called him, lower your voice, A.J., because A.J. always talked extra loud in class. I soon noticed that everybody at A.J.'s house talked extra loud. They had to, because in the background, the TV was always blaring. Now, every house I've been in so far has had a TV. Even Miss Mack had a TV, and I enjoyed some of the shows I'd seen with her. There's one channel that has nothing but the most frightening shows about wild animals attacking one another. I mean wild, like tigers and bears and hippopotamuses. Gee, I hope that's not on our vocabulary test in the near future. Those shows make me appreciate the protection of an ice cage, as long as the lock doesn't quite lock. There's another channel that only has people in funny-looking clothes, dancing and singing in very strange places. It makes me glad that I have a fur coat and don't have to figure out what to wear every day. Mostly, I like the cartoon shows. Sometimes they have mice and rabbits and other interesting rodents, although I've never seen a hamster show. Yet. Anyway, the difference at the Thomas's house is that the television is on all the time. There's a TV on a, ta on a table across from a big comfy couch and a big comfy chair, and someone's always sitting there watching. I know, because they put my cage down on the floor next to the couch. I had a very good view of the TV. I couldn't always hear the TV, though, because AJ's mother had a radio in the kitchen, which was blaring most of the time, while she cooked or did crossword puzzles or talked on the phone. No matter what she did, the radio was always on. When AJ's dad came home from work, he plopped down on the couch and watched TV while he played with the baby. Then AJ and Ty plugged in some videos, games, and played while Dad watched. Dealey listened to the radio with her mom and danced around the kitchen. When it was time for dinner, the whole family took plates and sat in the den so they could watch TV while they ate. Then they watched TV some more. They made popcorn and kept watching. Finally, the kids went to bed. The baby first, then Dealey, and later Ty and AJ. After they were all in their rooms, Mr. and Mrs. Thomas kept watching TV and ate some ice cream. Later, Mrs. Thomas yawned loudly. I've had it, Charlie. I'm going to bed, and I suggest you do too, she said. But Mr. Thomas just kept on watching TV, or at least he kept on sitting there until he fell asleep on the couch. I ended up watching the rest of the wrestling match without him. Unfortunately, the wrestler I was rooting for, Thor of the Glore, lost. Finally, Mr. Thomas woke up, yawned, flicked off the TV, and went upstairs to bed. Peace at last. But the quiet only lasted about ten minutes. Soon, Mom brought Bo downstairs and gave him a bottle while she watched TV. When Bo, when Bo finally fell asleep, Mrs. Thomas yawned and flicked off the TV. Blessed relief. Five minutes later, Mr. Thomas returned. Sorry, hamster. Can't sleep. He mumbled to me as he flicked on the remote. He watched and watched and then dozed off again. But the TV stayed on, leaving me no choice but to watch a string of commercials for car waxes, weight-reducing programs, exercise machines, and 
Red Hot Harmonica Classics. The combination of being nocturnal and being bombarded with sight and sound kept me wide awake. At the crack of ta- dawn, Dealey tiptoed into the room, dragging her doll by its hair, and switched to a cartoon show about princesses. She watched another show about cats and dogs. Scary. Then Mr. Thomas woke up and wanted to check some sports scores. Mrs. Thomas handed him the baby and his bottle, and soon the older boys switched over to video games, and their parents watched them play. It was loud, loud, loud. But the Thomases didn't seem to notice. What do you want for breakfast? Mom shouted. What? Dad shouted louder. What do you want for breakfast? Mom yelled. Toaster waffles! Dad yelled louder. I can't hear the TV! Ty hollered, turning up the volume. Do you want juice? Mom screamed. Can't hear you, Dad responded. And so it went. With each new question, the sound on the TV would be turned up higher and higher until it was positively deafening. Then Mom switched on a radio. The Thomases were a perfectly nice family, but I could tell it was going to be a very long and noisy weekend unless I came up with a plan. So I spun on my wheel for a while to help me think. And I thought and thought and thought some more. And then it came, the big idea. I probably would have come up with it sooner if I could have heard of, heard myself think. <laughs> Around noon, the Thomases were all watching the football game on TV. Or rather, Mr. Thomas was watching the football game on TV while AJ and Ty shouted questions at him. Mrs. Thomas was in the kitchen listening to the radio and talking on the phone. Dealey played peekaboo with the baby in the cozy chair. No one was watching me. So I carefully opened the lock that doesn't lock on my cage and make a, made a quick exit. Naturally, no one could hear me skittering across the floor as I made my way around the outside of the room, over to the space behind the TV cabinet. Then, with great effort, I managed to pull out the plug, one of the most difficult feats of my life. The TV went silent. Beautiful. Beautifully. Blissfully. Silently. Silent. So silent, I was afraid to move. I waited behind the cabinet, frozen. The Thomases stared at the TV screen as the picture slowly went dark. Ty, did you hit that remote? Mr. Thomas asked. Nah, it's under the table. Anthony, go turn that thing on again, Mr. Thomas said. AJ jumped up and hit the power button on the TV. Nothing happened. It's broken, he exclaimed. Mrs. Thomas rushed in from the kitchen. What happened? Mr. Thomas explained that that the TV had gone off and they discussed how old it was, five years, whether it had a guarantee, no one knew, and if Mr. Thomas could fix it, he couldn't. Everything was fine, and it went off, just like that. I guess we'd better take it in to get fixed, Mr. Thomas said. How long will that take? Dealey asked in a whiny voice. I don't know, her dad replied. How much will it cost? Mrs. Thomas asked. Oh, yeah, her husband said. I forgot, we're a little low on funds right now. The baby began to cry. I thought the rest of the family might start crying too. Well, I get paid next Friday, Dad said. AJ jumped up and waved his hands. That's a whole week away. I'm going to Grandma's house. Her TV works, said Ty. Me too, Dealey chimed in. Grandma's got her bridge club over there tonight, Mom said. I know, said Dad. Let's go to a movie. Do you know how much it costs to go to a movie? Mom asked. Besides, we can't take the baby. Oh. They whined and bickered for quite a while. They got so loud, I managed to scamper back to my cage, unnoticed. Then I guess I dozed off. Remember, I had hardly had a wink of sleep since I'd arrived. The bickering was a nice, soothing background after all that racket. I was only half asleep when the squabbling changed. But there's nothing to do, Dealey whined. Her father chuckled. Nothing to do? Girl, my brothers and I used to spend weekends at my grandma's house and she never had a TV. Wouldn't allow it. What did you do? AJ asked. Oh, we were busy every minute, he recalled. We played cards and board games and word games and we dug in her garden and played tag. He chuckled again. A lot of times we just sat on the porch and talked. My, my grandma, she could talk. What'd you talk about? Ty wondered. Oh, she'd tell us stories about her growing up, about ghosts and funny things. 
like the time her uncle was walking in his sleep and went to church in his pajamas. Mrs. Thomas gasped. Oh, go on now, Charlie. I'm just telling you what she told us. He woke up in the middle of the service, looked down, and there he was, in his blue and white striped pajamas. I let out a squeak of surprise, and the kids all giggled. Then Mrs. Thomas told a story about a girl in her class who came to school in her slippers by accident one day. Yes, the fuzzy kind, she explained with a big smile. They talked and talked, and Dad got out some cards, and they played a game called Crazy Eights, and another one called Pig, where they put their fingers on their noses and laughed like hyenas. When Bo fussed, they took turns jiggling him on their knees. After a while, Mrs. Thomas gasped, Goodness sakes, it's an hour past your bedtimes. The children all groaned ugh, and asked if they could play cards tomorrow. And in a few minutes, all the Thomases had gone to bed, and it was quiet, 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 for the first time since I'd arrived. Tip 11. Be careful. If set free, hamsters are experts at disappearing in a room. Guide to the Care and Feeding of Hamsters, Dr. Harvey H. Hammer.